Welcome everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Susan Welton, Oracle Marketing Manager at Proficient, and I'm excited to be moderating today's webinar, The Road to Modernization from EBS to Oracle ERP Cloud, a Midcoast Energy LLC success story. Time permitting, we will have a Q&A session at the end of today's event, so please type your questions into the chat box, and feel free to do that at any point in time throughout the webinar. I always get two questions associated with our webinars. Can I get a copy of the slides, and can I get a link to the recording? The answer to both questions is yes. We will definitely email all registrants with the information on how to access both the slides and the recording following today's event. Without further delay, I'd like to introduce today's speakers, Archna Shah, Harish Galati, Matt Mikowski, and Stephen Bricker. Archna is a senior leader with over 25 years in the energy industry serving in various IT finance and consulting roles. She has a unique mix of skills in accounting, finance, and IT. Her approach to transformational programs considers people, process, and technology to drive towards successful results. Harish is a senior IT leader with 20 plus years of experience supporting Oracle ERP and other accounting finance applications in the oil and gas and utilities industry. He has led functional and technical teams on various transformational projects with managed service partners based service models including offshore and onshore capabilities. Matt Mikowski with Proficient has nearly 20 years of experience in Oracle financial applications which includes large scale full cycle implementations across multiple industries, countries, and platforms. Matt's application expertise spans financials and supply chain. And lastly, Stephen Bricker, who is also with Proficient, is an account director with almost 20 years of experience selling experience technology solutions. Stephen is a frequent presenter at Oracle conferences and just presented actually at Open World with Stallion Oil Field Services, another customer of ours who recently implemented Oracle ERP as well. Welcome speakers. Stephen, please take it away. Thank you, and thanks again to Midcoast to participate with this, uh, this webinar with us. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Proficient uh, as far as the agenda, and then uh, quickly move on to the Midcoast Energy Success Story. Uh, talk a little bit with uh, Midcoast around why they chose the Oracle Cloud and what their footprint looks like. Um, also about the implementation approach and uh, philosophy around how we kind of migrate our, our users and our, our organizations and customers over to the Oracle Cloud. And then take Q&A. But like, uh, like we mentioned, please uh, go ahead and enter your questions whenever you'd like, and we'll definitely get to them and address those. A little, bit, a little bit about Proficient. Uh, Proficient is a company that's based in St. Louis uh, with locations all over the U.S. Uh, we, we often say that we have a location wherever there's a football team, and uh, we're highly acquisitive and highly in, in growth mode, and it's a really exciting time at Proficient because we do a lot of different technologies and a lot of different things well. Um, so good balance of, of expertise and scalability. Here's just a preview of some of our, uh, you know, of our offices in the U.S. and internationally. And, uh, and just to give you an idea of Proficient uh, from a profile perspective, um, we are about a half billion dollars in annual revenue and growing, publicly traded. And uh, we really pride ourselves on repeat business rate. That's, that's really the thing that um, we feel our, our analysts and our, our customers come back to, you know, review and our customers come back to us. And that's how we measure our success. More specifically, our Oracle practice, uh, we have expertise in a, in a lot of different areas within Oracle, and uh, we actually uh, have accreditation with, uh, with Oracle for their cloud applications. So um, the enterprise performance management space, um, working with finance and accounting across budgeting, forecasting, analytics, um, closed process, um, as well as the ERP practice um, where we have expertise um, in a number of different areas. Our pedigree in ERP was the e-business suite. And uh, around four or five years ago, we started migrating our customers to cloud and really seeing a lot of value there. And, uh, and a lot of quick wins, a lot of good time to value in those uh, application implementations. And then business intelligence is our third pillar um, with complete practices and capabilities from the whole OAC and um, data warehousing uh, complete uh, expertise. Specifically, our ERP project, uh, practice, we absolutely do the implementations, um, but we really have an approach and philosophy around uh, decreasing the number of customizations and, and really the number of applications and streamlining the business processes. So focusing on what Oracle has, uh, which are their modern best practices, business process flows, 
and doing on the front end uh, an exercise to map and also improve processes to those uh, future best practices. So we've done that for a number of customers and, and our, our practice goes back many, many years. Uh, we often talk about the, the seniority of our, of our resources and, and you know, not just leadership, but actually the folks that you work with at Proficient as really a big benefit for our customers. So that's a little bit about us. Um, we definitely wanted to pause here and get a sense of who you guys were. So um, just in terms of the uh, current ERP platform, if you are able to key in your uh, – There we are. Um, in terms of your, uh, your time frame for migrating to um, an Oracle cloud-based solution, we're curious on, uh, on your time frame. If you could click one of the radio boxes uh, right there, whether or not you're migrating to the cloud in the next 7 to 12 months or the next 1 to 2 years, just to get a sense of time frame. Some of our customers are migrating from a lot of different solutions. So I know the title of this is eBusiness Suite to Cloud, but a lot of our customers have migrated from you know, everything from Great Plains, AX, to uh, there's a lot of different solutions out there that we've, we've seen. We've, we've worked with everything from Inertia to Epicor to Rental Man to uh, a lot of different solutions. So I'm going to skip to results, see what that looks like. So it looks like uh, in real time we're migrating you know, over the next, you know, Every, everyone seems to be under two-year time frame, um, or, or the heavy majority of folks. So that's good to know in terms of background. So now I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to Archana Shah, who's going to start off and talk to us a little bit about Midcoast, and then we definitely want to hear about her journey uh, to the Oracle Cloud. So Archana, would you talk to us a little bit about Midcoast? Sure, Stephen. Um, a little bit about Midcoast. We were formed through an acquisition of assets uh, back last year. I think our first day of being Midcoast Energy LLC was August 1st of 2018. Um, with that came the need to restructure our whole IT organization, and a big, large part of that was the ERP solution. We, since we purchased assets, we are a midstream business. A gas midstream specifically, um, predominantly in Texas and Oklahoma area. And so when we purchased are these assets from a larger entity, a, a public entity, um, going into a private uh, environment, um, this company that came in to purchase these assets, ArcLight, which is our um, investors, and we formed Midcoast Energy LLC. We had to get off of the end of the <clears throat> public entities, uh, technologies, and they were on the Oracle on-prem ERP solution. So we had 12 months to do that, and that's kind of where we started. So, next slide here. Um, so Thanks, Arshana. Did you tell us? Mm -hmm. Sure. I was going to ask just in terms of a little bit of what, you know, kind of narrowing down, you know, what was driving the change in time frame. Um, Yep. quickness of the implementation. Yeah, so we were under a temporary service agreement uh, with the company that we purchased our, uh, our gas assets from, and that agreement was going to expire on July 2019. So we had 12 months to move from an, um, the existing environment that we were in into our own supported solution. And so that was our driver, uh, was that we had 12 months um, to do whatever we needed to do to have our own financial system in place. So, um, <clears throat> so our business drivers were we had to do something fairly quickly. We had to have no break in our business um, performance. Uh, we had to eliminate um, any kind of um, internal IT infrastructure that we had supporting supported through our um, acquired company that we acquired from, and we wanted to also standardize and simplify a lot of our processes, um, especially because the way the solution was implemented, um, it wasn't necessarily specific to our business. It was specific to the business, um, the company that owned the assets initially. 
So we wanted to make sure that we were doing the right things for Midcoast Energy. Thank you. And tell us a little bit about how you, you know, kind of came to select Oracle Cloud. So actually I was brought in specifically to, um, for one of the main reasons was to implement an ERP solution. Um, initially, they, the executives here thought that I would come in and just uh, select something and implement. But what we did was we did a very quick uh, four-week uh, assessment. And then we looked at several solutions, recognizing that um, one of the most important aspects of the solution would be time. How quickly could we implement um, with the environment that we were in? And so uh, the, some, of the, some of the things we looked at was uh, flexibility, um, quick implementation time, lower cost to implement, and then also could it, could it uh, incorporate all of the interfaces that we had from some of our business systems. So since we are a gas midstream business, we have Quorum, um, Right Angle, and Inuit as some of our business systems that manage um, <clears throat> Our transactions. So we had to have that, that integration piece as it was a very critical part of our decision making as to which solution we go with. So I know that some of these modules are, are identified here, but were they all, are all the modules listed? Could you tell us what all was part of phase one? Yeah, so we, we were really looking at a, uh, <clears throat> for the financial solution. Um, so we, and so we were looking at GL, AR, AP, uh, purchasing, procurement, and uh, projects. We needed a solution that could incorporate all of our uh, project work that we do um, and then have it flow from project to fixed assets. So we also implemented fixed assets along with that. So. Great. So we know there's always, you know, challenges in different projects. You know, can you talk to us a little bit about some of the you know, how you overcame risk with this rapid implementation? I'll, I'll let Harish kind of answer some of, the, um, some of those questions. Yeah, I think, uh, like Ashna mentioned, that time was our biggest constraint. So I think uh, having a uh, scope particularly clear and uh, <clears throat> what exactly what we are going to implement and what is the scope for each of the functional areas, uh, that was the key driver to basically push and make sure, make sure the technical team, functional team, and, and the business team are all clear on, on, on the scoping of it and, and the end result uh, of what they're going to be getting out of the functionality. Um, one of the things I will say on our operational challenges, um, we had a huge change management, yeah. um, I guess, challenge because our users were very used to and comfortable with Oracle on-prem. And we were not only changing their um, ERP solution, but we were changing every aspect of their IT solution because we were going onto our own platform of, for all of IT. So the challenges, the change management that they were, they were going to face was all encompassing. So they were expecting that by going to Oracle and going straight to Oracle Cloud, uh, it would be, that was one of the reasons we really considered that because the change would be I guess from a, it would be less um, impactful. Uh, we would be able to manage it better. Uh, our users were more accepting to it. Although Oracle Cloud is different, it is similar in many ways. So there was a, it was a, it was a good balance from a change perspective. What was the user feedback on the system compared to EBS? I think generally the user feedback was uh, pretty good. I think definitely because it's a change in uh, user screens. So uh, I think user got adapted to uh, through the trainings and when they were participating in the testing cycle. So uh, I think uh, initially we put the trainings in uh, before the go live, but we had to kind of retrain uh, some of the users uh, like there to click and all those things uh, after the go live as well. But now after three months of going live, it seems pretty, the users are pretty friendly and we don't hear retraining kind of issues over again. So it was uh, pretty adaptable and pretty flexible in uh, what they were expecting. I think overall, uh, very good feedback uh, on the functionalities. Were there any business processes that, that changed as part of this migration that, that you guys had to 
change management. You mentioned change management being a challenge. Were there some business processes that, that kind of drove that, you know, kind of change management challenge? And what were they? Yeah, uh, so business processes wise, we did uh, make improvements in a lot of areas. For example, uh, we didn't have requisitioning process before. It was a lot of uh, manual or paperwork driven requisitioning process. So we actually integrated that using the workflow. And uh, then also <clears throat> on the project side, uh, there were some AFE processes were manual and some were automated. We actually fully automated that. So those uh, two were kind of the key examples where we improved the uh, business, uh, business process itself. We also got really positive feedback on <clears throat> the ability to approve invoices and approve purchase orders and, and uh, projects via email. So they can do it on their phone uh, very easily and no matter where they are. So there's been a really positive feedback around that um, flexibility. Great. What about integrations? What did that look like across the cloud landscape? Um, I don't know if Matt, this is a good one for you. Yeah, so uh, their integration, you're, you're asking, yeah, so their integrations were, uh, th this might be a, a better question for Harish to answer from, uh, from or, or from their yeah. standpoint, but from our standpoint, we um, we actually, we teamed up on the integrations. Uh, we used uh, uh, our own uh, Python open source platform uh, to, to uh, link the systems together. I think also, um, Harish, correct me if I'm wrong, but used the uh, .NET capabilities internally. For, That's for right. some of their integration. So yeah, so it, it was a mixed bag. And as Archer mentioned, there were there's the quorum and, and right angle systems. Uh, so, so some of that stuff they handled from their end, and we handled the the Oracle side. Yeah, I think uh, integrations wise, I want to add on um, uh, for technical folks on the call that uh, technically, I think the integrations using API structure versus when we used to use. EBS way of uh, uh, loading the data, validating the data, that has changed quite a bit. And uh, especially learning through API how you load it, uh, that is kind of a transformational and very efficient uh, uh, over the period. Uh, uh, I think uh, besides those integrations, then we have banking and other integrations which have on the cloud side, it's very standardized. And when we speak to the banks or any other external entities for integration, they know what formats or standardized format we are talking about, and then they provide those formats, and you can pick and choose based on your business functionality which which one you want to go with. So it's very enhanced and uh, very standardized uh, for the cloud. You mentioned multiple IT projects going on concurrently. What about any dependencies or um, any kind of organization with the other go lives or or project work? Um, was there any challenges there? <coughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, we also, not only were we um, implementing the ERP, but they were, um, we were moving Quorum at right angle from onto our own in, in coast environment as well. So they had their own go live and their own timelines uh, that we had to coordinate with. So as we were working on these interfaces, we were also uh, working along their timeline implementation. Great. And Any oh, other so challenges you want? Our, yeah, our banking structure also changed. So we were we changed our banks. Um, so we were starting completely fresh. Uh, we weren't just changing our banking interface. We were creating a new bank interface and new banking structure within the within the system. Thank you. So you mentioned a few different uh, points on on why you chose Oracle Cloud uh, to begin with. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, kind of the, uh, I guess, some of the benefits that came out of Oracle Cloud you didn't see coming? Yeah, yeah sure. I'll, I'll take that. Uh, so I think a few of the benefits, uh, especially around the integrations that we see, initially we were a little reluctant in seeing how the APIs versus the traditional way of doing the integrations work but it, it turns out to be really beneficial and very efficient performance-wise uh, how it handles the data. I think uh, besides that, then also the scheduling part of your non-prod instances, that's a real benefit like uh, you don't have to data, depending on how your internal environment is, like you have to request the DBAs for environment refresh. I think that's a learning curve, but that's also very, very beneficial how you actually uh, schedule your non-prod uh, refreshes of the instance. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think another big benefit is the reporting also uh, that we realized. I think uh, OTBI, we knew that a lot of reports will be available, but how user-friendly within the first three months we are realizing users are actually building their own reports and just validating with us with the way they build it. I think it's one of the benefits that we see uh, in the reporting side itself. Overall, um, I will tell you going into this project, um, <clears throat> I was very worried about how we were going to do this in six months. I wasn't, we weren't given a choice of, um, you know, of the timeline. We had to meet at six months. I, we started off at 12 months, but by the time we went through the assessment and brought the team together and everything, we really had six months to uh, put, this, put the ERP in place um, with a, a month of, um, you know, just having some cushion. So six months to do this was very questionable. Uh, Harish and I are experienced in ERP, Oracle, uh, on-prem um, users as well as implementers. And to be able to do it in six months, overall, that was just a surprise, I have to say. Um, and it was, e it was possible because of some of the um, standardizations of how things were done, even the interfaces, um, even setting up the chart of accounts. We had to rethink how we had the chart of account structure. But just going through the process, um, it, it, was, it, it was easier knowing that we didn't have to worry about the infrastructure aspect of things. So. Can you describe a little bit about oh, – go ahead. Sorry, I want to add on. Uh, uh, besides, I think, proficient okay. team also, uh, Oracle team, Oracle support team, whether it's your uh, customer success manager or implementation success manager along with the account manager, they help you guide through the process of the implementation and uh, basically take it from, and uh, there's a lot of learning uh, uh, through the web and, they, and they, how they guide you, how you need to set up the technical environment uh, from prod to non-prod and vice versa, and how do you do refreshes. I think they, they were really helpful in guiding on the technical aspect of that. So I think that mm -hmm. was also one of the key parts. Yeah, hey, hey Archana and Harish, this is Matt. Um, just real quick, I wanted to just kind of comment back, going back on this whole idea of six months. As I recall, just kind of a flashback to that very first week, I remember your surprise when we came <laughs> out with a chart of account structure and enterprise yeah. design. By, I think by the first Friday, maybe the second Friday at the latest, it was, it, and, and I attribute that to, to your team's you know, contribution. You guys really allowed us to kind of run that process and help you through it, but, but you brought the content, you guys brought the people to the table, and I often tell people, in 20 years, I've never seen a more flawless project, right? It really, it really ran like clockwork, six months, you know, to the, to the minute practically. Uh, so it was just a really incredible effort, uh, for, certainly from, from the team at um, Midcoast. Yeah. To piggyback on what Matt just Mm -hmm. go, go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to ask about the size of your team and how it compared to the EBS team that was supporting it and what team you had in place when you launched the project. <clears throat> so the team we had in place when we launched the project was me and Tarish, and that's it. <laughs> and so <laughs> it really brought um, a lot to the table uh, with the clear, um, we were very clear on who the team was from Proficient and what role they would play on the project. And then also from our user standpoint, from our business, um, you know, we had clear uh, business support uh, that this needed to be done from an executive level all the way down um, to the accountant level. And so we had, um, you know, all, all the key um, stakeholders in place and everyone was headed towards one goal, which a lot of times it takes time for everyone to get into that mindset of what the goal is and believe in that goal. But here we had, you know, we really didn't have a choice, but even with not having, knowing that we didn't have a choice, we had so much engagement um, from the team across the board uh, with our system implementers with Proficient along, all the way through with our business users. So that was really um, the key. And one thing I would definitely, you know, again say is, you guys didn't really have a lot of what I'll call second guessing, or, or you know, and, and you really, um, 
I think, really took the methodology seriously. We made decisions quickly, didn't backtrack. We were very affirmative, and I think that's what really also helped make the project very successful and, again, come in at that six-month timeline. So, I mean, there's, there's so many factors, a lot of cooperation, a business team uh, that that brought the, all their knowledge to the table, and they were at every event. They, they were at all the meetings, they were at all the training, they were at all, all the testing events. They did their documentation, they did their homework. So I know yeah. we've talked about some of the success criteria. How was Oracle supportive during the process? We have the best Oracle team. <laughs> um, <laughs> so our, our, uh, I think we were very uh, blessed and our system implementers as well as our Oracle um, support team um, from our from the very beginning to some point of the discussion of should we be going with Oracle and Oracle Cloud really was the question. Um, they were there supporting us, answering our questions. Um, Alistair was um, Alistair Love was our um, uh, Oracle representative and um, very patient and helping us all through, helping us throughout with any questions and issues. And then once we went into the implementation uh, mode, we had a um, customer, success manager. customer success manager assigned to us, which I think is new for uh, Oracle Cloud implementations. I don't think that so many uh, on-prem um, implementation we've had that type of that relationship. But that customer success manager was always also available, was there for us, for to see us through the implementation and make sure that that implementa the implementation was successful. And Harish could probably speak more to the... Yeah, uh, I think they, they, kind of prepped you, they kind of prepped you for, uh, for all the things that you need to do in advance in going to your first uh, <laughs> testing cycle or first prototyping, like these are the printers or servers and instances that you need to set up when your when your bill, bills of material or your sub, uh, subscription type of details are finalized. So that's one of the key important steps before going stepping into the implementation to make sure that you are thorough with the subscription model and uh, and and, uh, and the setup of those things. And they they were available. Um, all all of our resources, um, both on the proficient side and the Oracle side, were working together. So it, a, it seemed like a very cohesive team moving forward in the same direction, um, which was very helpful. What about training and, and that preparation for Go Live? How did you guys manage that? So we had uh, uh, one uh, change management person hired who was responsible for all the communication as well as all the building up of all the training material and the scheduling of all the training during our testing cycles, UAT, and, and uh, before and after go live as well. So we, that person was very thorough. Uh, we, that person also took help from uh, like the business unit to also lead some of the training. So some of the technical questions can be answered by them, but it has to be accompanied by the business lead so they can answer any process-related question. Because like, uh, like I mentioned before, some processes were changing in some of the areas, so they, they had to answer some business questions. And the change manager, in order to um, create those training documents, um, she actually leveraged proficient um, scripts and um, the information that proficient was creating specific to Midcoast Energy, test scripts, yeah. the test scripts. Um, she used those to create the training um, documents videos and the um, information that we actually use to do the training. Thank you. And like Matt mentioned, we can't stress enough the, the customer and, and, and you guys' participation and, and, you know, kind of willingness and, and uh, rolling up your sleeves when it was necessary and, and you know, getting through hurdles because, you know, projects are always a challenge and, and this one went very well. So. Um, we have a number of questions, so I'm going to move on to kind of what's next in, in you guys' mind, and, uh, and that way we have plenty of time for Q&A. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think uh, the next phase or uh, the phase two was basically uh, the key thing was to stabilize uh, and go live and uh, retrain the users. That's one of the key things because it was a user interface kind of changing from uh, EBS to Oracle, so people had to be retrained. And uh, uh, a lot of reports that we initially didn't build as part of the project, uh, we were started building that after go live. So we actually captured a lot of 
reports that we were thinking of building live on go live and some of them will be delivered three months to six months after go live. Uh, I think uh, then educate, I think that was one of the biggest uh, that topic came again is uh, uh, educating all the users on new chart of accounts. But that can take several uh, iterations to understand how the chart of accounts is going to change, your numbering scheme has changed within the segments and how this is going to reflect, uh, especially if you are managing department and cost center and how you are going to run those reports for managers or uh, supervisors. Uh, then also addressing uh, any uh, network connectivity type of issues, which browser to use, which not to use, which uh, uh, works better. Uh, and I think that there are some uh, new functionality uh, uh, that we uh, plan to implement later uh, was uh, like mentioned here for budgets for the next year, then the bank reconciliation, uh, lockbox, and those things we decided to do later after go live. Stephen, I think um, you mentioned that there's some questions. But yeah, there's a, there's a number of questions uh, we have coming up. I'm curious how you guys managed, um, you know, just in terms of the uh, the quarterly updates for cloud. That was one of the questions that we had. Yeah, no, oh, that's an excellent question. Uh, so I think uh, you have to stay on top uh, of all the updates that are coming in the next releases. And the second part, important part, that we are also we just started with the business, also uh, uh, business users to get educated uh, on the new releases. So basically we are meeting with them on more regular basis, explaining them what new functionality or also the what new break fixes that, that are coming into the next release and those, when those fixes will be available. And if they are curious about any new functionality, then they will ask more questions on that, whether it makes uh, sense for us to implement that uh, new functionality and it fits our business purposes or not. So that's one of the key challenges. And also on the technical side, uh, we are uh, basically putting some automated testing tools uh, that can also be leveraged which because we have to test for every quarter. So we are uh, exploring some tools and technologies basically that will help automate some of the testing. Thank you. So we got here with the speed to value approach. Matt, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, yeah. So there's that act. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the speed to value. There is a survey uh, that, I'll, that I'll bring up on the screen next. It's going to start up. I've got to double click on it. Is that right? What is the primary business driver for your migration to cloud platforms? Uh, adoption of modern business process, need for a solution that can scale, reduction in maintenance cost, decustomize your current solution, or all of the above. I suspect we get a lot of all of the above, maybe, but. Uh, so that uh, those results are coming in. Quite a, we have a lot of people on the call here, so just give this a few more seconds. People click those buttons. All right, so yeah, a lot of people just kind of have that cross-functional, cross-system requirement. Um, but moving on into into the speed to value program. Proficient works initially with Oracle to conduct a small Oracle Cloud readiness workshop. And this is just kind of the, the very beginning beginning. By the time we caught up to Midcoast and they caught up to us, they had pretty much already, I think, probably been through this process. They kind of came to us in the in the later stages of of the uh, beginning that what would be for them near mid middle of their project, they just brought us in towards that end to start the project only in a in a matter of a few short weeks. So they were kind of already through this. But normally what we do is we team up with Oracle, we we uh, take a quick look at your business processes, and we do some perform some workshops with you uh, to assess your current footprint and you know how how capable you might be of moving to the cloud or how quickly. Uh, when we get into the next phase of that, that's really what we call our full speed to value evaluation. So if you, you kind of get through the, the readiness workshop and you say, hey, we want to we want to know more. We want to continue and, and, and hear more from what uh, Proficient and Oracle have to say. We'll do a full speed to value uh, assessment. That, that assessment can last anywhere from you know, four to eight weeks, let's say. It depends on the size of your company. It depends on what your potential footprint is. It depends on what you're doing. It depends what your business is. A lot of depends in there, right? Uh, in the case of Midcoast, they had an unbelievable speed to value of six months. Now, again, they had figured a lot of this out in advance. 
this is pretty unique to them. They had a mandate to get out of their current system. They chose the best possible path for their needs, which was the cloud. They couldn't have done this timeline, I think, in, on any on-prem or, or, or to stay on EBS. I think they, they, they readily recognize that. Some of the other drivers that, that Arshan and Harish mentioned, the, the simplification of business processes, the relieving themselves of any kind of IT uh, overburdensome architecture to support. So we went through, what we normally would do is go through a speed to value with a customer. Again, address your overall business needs, your challenges, your pain points. Uh, I've you know, kind of come up with what I'll call a, a ready, willing, and able uh, index. That's um, something that kind of gauges your change management. Um, and, and the challenges in your, in your tra change management. Are you ready to move to the cloud? I think that's one of the first questions that we ask and that other people ask. They ask, how can we do this with full supply chain? We have a full on-prem EBS system. Uh, we understand that certain applications might not yet be there in supply chain. So that's something that we can help you assess and we can help you take the right roadmap into the cloud. It might be financials first and then supply chain later. Uh, we can do uh, integrations from, from the cloud to your, your on-premise system. So it's not an all or nothing. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a binary decision. You can still have a roadmap into the cloud and it might span several months or potentially several years. In the case of, in the mid, in the case of Midcoast, it was six months. And a lot of that was just based on their mandate. But um, again, they're, in retrospect, I would say the ready, willing, and able index was like 100%, right? They were ready, they were absolutely willing, and they had, and they had the full ability uh, to do it. They had all the staff on board, they had all the motivation in the world to do it. Um, Archana mentioned the big change management aspects of it, but to reduce that risk going into the cloud based on the fact that they were already on EBS and their people were already familiar with Oracle systems, kind of reduce the change management risk on the application side. So the, in their footprint for six months, we brought them live on financials, which included general ledger, accounts payable, fixed assets, receivables, and expense management with, uh, with the uh, com uh, corporate credit cards. We brought them, on, uh, we brought them live on uh, project financials, as well as procurement. And in procurement in particular, I think they had a lot of surprises there. I don't know if Archana uh, <laughs> could speak yeah. to that, because she's not really in the procurement department. Do you, do you have any comments on that area? Because that was an area that, we, that was a lot of uncertainty around that. Yeah. No, actually, um, the procurement area, they were pleasantly surprised, the procurement team, with what they were getting. Um, the same team uh, in the past, in the EBS world, were very hesitant about um, some of the um, adoptions of the process, process adoptions that they took on um, in the cloud environment. And now that they're now fully functional and using some of the functionality, um, they're actually quite pleased with how well it's working. So um, it, it's actually improved their processes, brought some efficiencies. Now they're even looking at um, they had a lot of discussions of where does some of the um, initial like requisition start? Does it start out in the field? Does it start? Do we bring it all into the our corporate office? Um, there was lots of discussions, and there was a lot of um, holding back to the old ways. Yeah. Um, but now that they've uh, incorporated the cloud process of how it's set up is in the cloud, they're really happy with it. I think on, on top of that, uh, basically the requisition process will also build the delegation of authority, like the spending limit approvals and all that in that process. So that's quite automated uh, based on their profiles or job profiles or le levels. So I think overall process, it worked really well and it's uh, well accepted by the users. Yeah, and there was, a, right. there was a whole simplification aspect to that as well around the delegation of authority and uh, leadership embracing the simplified Structure. All right. And the more the more you speak, the more I think. How did we do this in six months? I'm still shaking my head at, 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 in a way that we're able to uh, to achieve that. Um, in relationship to the collaborative aspects of the system, we we did in, uh, enable social, and I think we trained you on social. Has that kind of taken hold throughout the company? 
the social collaboration between maybe the purchasing department accounts payable and the matching and kind of any kind of back and forth communication? Yeah, I think initially it was especially very helpful with the two processes with requisitioning and invoice coding. Like some people didn't know how to code or they were asking more information about the invoicing. But after after a month and a half of go live, we actually changed a little bit of the review process within the invoice workflow, and it uh, kind of uh, slowed down, not slowed down, I, I would say, but actually lowered the question that uh, uh, people were asking about the workflow process itself. So we put a review queue kind of uh, after the invoice coding and approval is all done. So I think we made right. minor functionality changes in the workflow, which helped us. Uh, but social was definitely helpful and part of the process itself. Great, great. And I think you made a great point there. You went live, and now you're in a you're in a um, a refinement stage, right? Not everything yeah. is always yeah. perfect that go live. You 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 implement, and then you refine, and and that's kind of what gets you over the finish line a, a little bit faster too. Yeah. Um, we actually, from a, after go live, we were expecting um, we were ready for a lot of questions, a lot of issues, concerns, adoption uh, challenges. And we did get some of that, but overall, um, I think it was like two weeks of maybe um, a lot of challenges, and then things started um, tapering off, and people started seeing the value or adopting to the new change fairly quickly. Right. And, and one indicator is I'll tell you how many times my phone rang after your go live. <clears throat> zero. My phone rang zero <laughs> times after your go live. That's that is you turned time. off. <laughs> well, okay, and I changed my phone number on you, but no. Um, and I'm in the witness protection program and all that. But it, it really, it, uh, just, it really, literally, I got zero phone calls after a go live, and I was, I, I kept thinking to myself, is, is something, you know, they not like me anymore. Um, but I mean, just, it's just again further testament to how well it went. Um, in terms of again how we achieved this, one thing I want to say to the people on the phone is, Archna, Harish, and their team actually came to the table with what's on the screen in the design phase. They came with a full, actually in the RFP phase. In your RFP, you had a full requirements traceability matrix. We refined it as part of the first you know, two, three weeks of the project, but they actually did their own speed of value in a way, right? They figured out all of the requirements. They figured out all their needs, and they more or less handed that over to us. So again, a lot of success is, is just driven by the customer. The more that you can grasp what you need to do and and uh, we can then help you take that and convert that into uh, system training, to, uh, change management, configuration, testing, and, and, and ultimately go live. So um, kudos again uh, to, to that team for bringing that forth. Just trying to highlight some of the, you know, I think a lot of people on the phone in general think, how can you succeed so quickly? And, and again, it is, it is just everyone coming to the table. Um, with that, I know that we're running into our last 15 minutes here, so I think we'll go to questions. But Susan, did you want me to do something here at this point with questions? I can start off with the, you know, kind of start to go over some of the questions and then just open it up to the group. Um, I guess one of the questions, just starting off, talk a little bit about um, the chart of accounts, you know, rationalization and, um, you know, in the projects module. I guess was there a restructure of the chart, you know, and we we started with a we started the, our question was what should our chart of accounts look like? We didn't even look at okay we have this chart of accounts. Um, our first question was what do we need our chart of accounts to be? So that's kind of how we started. There was a lot of restructuring, a lot of cleanup, simplification. Um, but before we even went to doing the work around the cleanup and the simplification, we wanted to make sure we had the right structure, um, the design, we had the right design in place. So there was a lot of work up front. I would say we probably spent a good yeah. first half of the project yeah. just working through the chart of accounts, um, the details, um, cleaning it up, really questioning, do we need that many you know, uh, cost centers, that means breakdown, that detail, that kind of stuff. So. Great. Thank you. The next question is, um, did procurement include inventory? No. I didn't have inventory. Okay. Um, and how did you manage procure, uh, services procurement in the cloud? I think we talked a little bit about, uh, about um, procurement in the cloud. 
So uh, uh, we had basically both uh, goods and services uh, configured in the in the cloud uh, using the different cat purchasing categories based on goods versus services and routed through different buyers, whether if it is a uh, workflow, if it is based on goods uh, including the requisitions or it is services that we use, use that category to drive the workflow process itself. I don't know if that's the answer you're looking for, Rich. No, that's helpful, Harish. Um, another question, did the actual integration costs or interfaces meet your expectations? That's a very subjective question, uh, but I think overall we were surprised like how the integrations are well standardized and the APIs that support the integrations are well built. Uh, we didn't, uh, uh, we built like uh, it was mentioned before, we built the Python servers to, for data transfers and file transfers. So overall integrations were much, actually less than what we were expecting. Uh, so I think overall we are well happy with the performance uh, of the integrations as well. Great. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, did you have any users clinging to the old system for dear life? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but at the same time, uh, the users knew that they really couldn't cling to the old system because it just wasn't going to be there. Um, so we were in a unique situation with respect to um, everyone knew that we had no choice. So. Thank you. Could you elaborate a little on your technical integration with your on-premise systems? Yes. Uh, so for uh, for most of the uh, on-premise system, uh, like uh, what's mentioned, right angle or quorum, we build uh, directly API-based integrations uh, directly with those systems, and uh, where the script or the initiation trigger of those integrations generate from that system directly into into Oracle. And in some cases, we use Python servers like for our HR or uh, HR integrations. We land the file there and pick up the file and then use that for uh, uh, employee integration as well. So it was basically those two structures. And for the rest of the bank or other integrations, we use direct uh, Oracle method where they provide or land the files, bank files or credit card files directly on their system. And uh, those are pretty secured and they have a very high standards of encryptions and uh, and all the masking data that's required. So I think overall, uh, it, it's, it's really built for standardization, so it worked really well. Thank you, Harish. Okay, the next one is a, it's actually a multi, uh, three questions in one. I'll, I'll, I'll start off with, uh, can you discuss the transition to Oracle Fixed Assets? Yeah. Um, so with uh, Fixed Assets, <clears throat> our, since, we were going from someone else's on-prem environment into our own environment. Our fixed assets were actually on a spreadsheet, uh, being managed on a spreadsheet. So we had to uh, convert that, those fixed assets, that fixed assets data and put it into our Oracle Cloud environment. Um, <clears throat> we were not using Power Plan previously, um, so it was our fixed assets was being managed on Oracle um, on-prem and uh, we are now using the cloud to do that. We do depreciation and um, everything directly through Oracle. Great, thank Ready you. That? Next, okay. I believe so. Um, the next question was, do you use any AP invoice image automated applications like Web Center Capture, WRFR uh, in cloud? Yes, we did uh, use OCR integration uh, of the in AP invoice images and put that in the workflow as well for approval. So we, we did use that and uh, there is a definitely a setup required in advance of setting up emails to actually uh, send uh, invoice uh, to that OCR image. So that uh, technical setup needs to be done in advance. Thank you. Um, the next question is how much data did you migrate to the cloud? How much data cleansing was required and did Oracle Proficient provide tools? Yeah, so for GL side we converted last one and a half year of data uh, that we converted. For the most part, uh, we converted only open transactions, whether it's AP, uh, AP invoices or procurement, uh, POs or project commitments, those are only the open balances or the open uh, open items that we had. We didn't convert any of the closed item. 
we extracted that closed item data as well as kind of a separate project. So we can actually put that for file storage or for historical uh, data that we need to and, manage. And Proficient did help <laughs> us with um, some scripts to provide to the company that was hosting our on-prem environment uh, for them to run those scripts so we could get some data extracts. Yeah. And the Proficient's technical team was really strong. Actually, we didn't have the direct database access, so they literally built uh, those scripts uh, thinking what we are going to get is by looking at the screens. Uh, so I think that was a really remarkable job on the Proficient time to build those and get those. Uh, we got uh, literally 100% success rate, or I would say 99-point success rate, actually, in, in the most of our conversions, uh, where we didn't have, I think, we, we were able to manage uh, that data manually whatever it is not able to convert. So it was excellent work there. Thank you. Speaking of data conversion, uh, how much data did you migrate to the cloud? And how much, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we, we just were talking about that one. Um, yeah. Data uh, system customization. How, how customized were your legacy systems? Um, you know, did how much, how much, you know, Kimleys or how many, how much customization was moved over or, or remediated? And what integration remains? I can answer part sure. of it. Um, we, the old system had a lot of customizations, um, and some of those customizations were specific to um, the, the oil business and not necessarily gas midstream business. And so going into this new environment, uh, we really, uh, in order to be able to do this in six months, we really had to take on that um, strong um, hand around no customizations and really using standard functionality. Um, I can, I mean, Harish could talk a little bit more detail on the integration piece, but. Yeah, and in the previous system that we had literally over 20 in, uh, integrations or 20 different systems that were integrating with, <coughs> because we reduced the number of systems, we also reduced the uh, complexity with that. Whether you are using BFFs specifically, but all over the mm -hmm. place, whether it's master data, your transactional data, reporting into different operating units or business units. So we reduced all that complexity and basically went to very clean, very simplified structure, starting from COA even to the business unit design as well. And we really uh, questioned our users when they would say they, that's how we've always done it. Um, the question was, we would always start a meeting off by saying, how do we need to do it now? Yeah. Not necessarily that's how we did it. Great. This next question may be for Matt. Um, it, it's a question around: Can we? Can they have the same leverage with Oracle Cloud as they as they have with Oracle ERP on prem, with client specific customizations and enhancements? I'm not sure how to. Not sure how to exactly interpret that question. Can we have some <laughs> same leverage in Oracle Cloud environment as we have on prem? The same ERP? leverage with. With Oracle Cloud is on premise. So, for example, I would think like they're talking about with customization. So, like maybe the leveraging of like the PaaS suite or um, leveraging like what we've done I mean, with our own. Yeah, extensions. I mean, I think, I th yeah, I think you know, customizations. People tend to speak to them, and it, it, they can be wide varieties and different flavors. There's the idea of customizing the applications and forms directly. Then there's the idea of, of doing reports. Um, and then and then integrations and, and different workflows, right? Cloud supports all the integrations. I think that you could, you know, beyond imagine. Um, certainly, they're they're easier. Cloud is much easier to integrate with uh, with EBS in terms of reports. No issue, really, no issue with reports. Any any data that's in the system, you can extract out using uh, Oracle uh, transaction business intelligence. If you want on the phone, if, if you've been through the uh, sales cycle at all, it's heard, referred to as OTBI. And you can use OTBI to write outbound uh, integrations and, and put them on scheduled processes and, and that kind of thing. With regards to directly customizing the applications, you really, you know, um, you really can't do that. And quite frankly, there's so much configuration enablement now in the cloud that there would be almost no need to do it. If you absolutely have a proprietary process that cannot be supported directly by the applications, then that would be likely a custom application or an existing application that you currently have, whether it be in the cloud or on-prem, um, or, or you know, it can be moved. That, that, that application, if it's on-prem, can be moved into the cloud. It can become uh, a, an application that sits on platform as a service and be, and be integrated with the cloud product. So all different flavors. I, I think there's a lot of levers to pull uh, to get done what you need done. 
Thank you. Okay, we probably only have time for a couple more questions. Um, next one is, were there any, I, I think we talked about uh, your resources a, a little bit, but just in terms of another question around incremental headcount, have you added any headcount to support cloud? Um, I mean, compared to the team that we have supporting the on-prem environment, it is a lot less. Um, from a support standpoint, a lot less headcount. We have, since we've gone live, we have added um, some support because our system implementers are now not with us anymore. <laughs> so we um, do have some in-house support uh, supporting the application, one technical resource, um, and two functional resources. Great, thank you. Um, the next one, um, is there any third-party software vendor integration done with Oracle Cloud? No. I mean, third-party integration uh, is only the Vertex okay. is one of them uh, we can think of. That's mainly for tax rates uh, that we are uh, importing into Oracle. Besides that, I don't know. We don't, yeah. Okay, um, and I will wrap it up with um, one of the other uh, participant questions, which, which is, what are your top three lessons learned? That's a good one. Um, make sure you have executive level all the way down engagement from the beginning, um, and that they are part of the decision making uh, up front. So, and, make, and they continue to be part of the milestone decision make, uh, decisions as you go through the project. That would be mine. Yeah, I think the second is uh, basically, again, uh, to make sure the scope and uh, delivered functionality for each of these business functional areas is very clear and crisp. Because uh, you don't want to get into the especially small timeline project and you don't have the clear scope defined for each of those areas. I think once you have that clear, that was one. And the second one, uh, um, Whoever you bring in to implement your project, be very clear on what their skill sets are and who they are. Um, we were very lucky. Uh, Proficient came in, and we actually were able to meet some of the, um, the, the folks that would be on our project, and it was very clear what knowledge they had and how they would be able to help us. So that was um, very important. Well, thank you guys so much. I can't thank you enough for participating uh, to our customer Midcoast as well as our partner Oracle and, uh, and the proficient team that participated in this project, Matt, you and your team. Um, a couple other notes. Uh, definitely would uh, take a look at proficient and follow us. Uh, we are on social media. Uh, we are participating in the Oracle conferences. Uh, we have a number of outstanding questions still coming in. Uh, so I'd encourage you to work with proficient. Reach out to us. We could coordinate a follow-up call. We'd love to hear from you guys and answer your questions. And then for the folks that are actually based in Houston, we have an event with Midcoast coming up uh, November 19th. Uh, so definitely reach out to us. We would love to include you guys in that. And thank you once again from the folks at Proficient. Thank you to Midcoast, and thanks to our partner, Oracle. Mm -hmm.